Hey, YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and we are still a man reptile world. We're kind of doing a whole group of filming in here today. Uh, but we are in our zoo currently, and we're showing off one of our newer zoo animals. Now, these came to us by way of a gentleman, or a lady. I don't remember which now. It was a gentleman, wasn't it? I think so. We think so. And they sold off a chunk of a collection, more or less. And this was part of that collection. So these are two, a pair of Asian vine snakes. Now, Asian vine snakes, a few things about them is they're... A little bit difficult to keep uh, in the sense that they are lizard eaters typically so that's kind of what they like but you can see where their name comes from they're extremely long for their body size uh, <laughs> and they are venomous so yes we are free handling a venomous snake right now but let me put a little bit more context on that they're a, they're venomous but not dangerous and you may be saying what but they're a rear fang snake and they have a very very mild toxin likely could not even get the rear fangs into you if they did bite you and if they did it's going to be like ow stop that it's not going to be anything deadly and dangerous you're not going to have to go to the hospital you're not going to lose an arm nothing like that it'll be really really uh, mild super super mild um, so there is no fear in free handling these at all Caleb's not taking any risk if he gets bit it's not going to do anything they do tend to like to bite in the face so I said he could be the one to do that because who the hell likes being bit in the face not this guy uh, by anything, even though you really can't do much damage. But yeah, you're looking, I see you, give me the side eye. So they have a really cool body shape. That's where the name comes from. They look like a vine. You can see the head has got some width to it for getting that little lizard body down. But they're mostly just this really long, beautiful green snake. Um, they're pretty common in the pet trade. But if you do want to get into them, you do need to check. We actually cannot sell these in the city limits. We can possess them because of our pet shop license. But technically, we can't sell them because they are a rear-fanged venomous species. So some of your local laws may say, no, ours do. Now, if you live in different states, it's going to be different, and even each municipality. For example, living out in the country, if I wanted to keep these at my house, I, I likely would be okay. Living in the city, I cannot do it. Uh, some folks will tell you that all rear-fanged venomous snakes are not deadly. That is not true. Uh, these guys aren't deadly. Your hog knows that you're technically a rear fang venomous snake are not deadly. They're Garters. really common in the pet trade. Garter snakes, another one, are not deadly. Boom slangs are another one. They're, they'll kill you. Uh, don't fuck with boom slangs. Just because rear fang does not always mean not deadly, but in this case, it most certainly does. Anything you want to talk about with these Asian vines? Probably my favorite thing is there's three different species of Asian vines, um, and each species has their own diet. Okay. So this species here is a lizard and fish eater. And they're mainly going to be on your lizards. Um, and then there's another species that are strictly fish. That's all they'll eat. You can't even get them to eat anoles like you can these guys. And there's another species that eats both those and bird eggs. No. Oh, so, so none of them are easier than the other. They no, all suck they at feeding. All, I've, honestly, though, this one is the species that you want because um, they eat anoles and fish, which are your two most readily available. Well, what if I have bird eggs? I mean, I would not feed one from the wild just because you don't, I mean, you don't know what parasites, but Correct. honestly, a lot of people will get like uh, little quail eggs. we we'll feed them those. Yep. Now, is this one of the snakes, I know there's a specific snake that does it, its name escapes me now, where it'll eat the egg and it's got little spikes inside of like it's a That sophomore, pops it. It pops the egg. So that, and they go, not <gasps> this species. <gasps> their actually common the name is bur uh, egg eater. Like egg that's, eater. that's yeah. their name. Um, the other cool thing about these guys is, like, the, the, just the way they move. Like, they are just, I, there will be times in there that I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm missing one. But it's really just they're so long and viney that it, they just blend right in so yeah. well. It's a great camouflage. The other thing is, is their metabolism is much different than other snakes. Most of your snakes you feed once a week. This one can eat two to three times a week. And now part of that's due to being arboreal. Yes. Typically your snakes that are arboreal have a much higher metallic. Yes. They're moving a lot more. Yes. And so like you can kind of look at it like this. So let's look and take one extreme. Let's take our blood pythons, right? Our blood pythons, they pretty much sit. They don't do shit. They hang out. And you don't have to feed them a whole lot. As a matter of fact, you want to not feed them all the time, correct? Right. They're fun. We had to slow ourselves down because they're fun. But you need to put them on a different feed schedule when they're adults. Babies, eh, adults, exactly. but you don't want to feed yep. them like you do your ball pythons. 
Ball pythons are kind of that middle snake. They're going to hide in their height a lot. They may come out and do some cruising at night, get a little exercise. They can eat about once a week, be good to go. It's about perfect for them. Plus, it's hard to get them to feed every week anyway. But when they're going, that's not going to be a problem. It's really hard, I think, to get a ball python truly obese. Yeah. I haven't really seen it. And then these guys, being your arboreal, they move constantly. These, your green tree pythons, your emerald tree boas, anything that's up in the trees all the time can probably eat a little more frequently. Uh, and they also tend to not always eat huge meals. Exactly, yes. Because that big chunk's going to slow them down. So they prefer to eat some smaller meals more frequently than big meals every so often. Unlike your blood, which you can give it a big meal and say, bye, I'll, I'll see you in a month, and it's going to be content. Exactly. So most of your snakes, like you're saying, you go off, you know, you want there to be slightly bulger mm -hmm. or whatever. These guys, you don't even go off by the width of their belly. You go by the size of their head. You want the, the prey item you're eating to be a little bit smaller than their head. If you look, the head is not real big on these guys at no. all. I can lift that up for the camera there. It's pretty tiny. Uh, so, you know, you think of about an anole, and anole's not a really big snake. So it's kind of kind of cool. I always love their head shape too. And in some ways, it's not exactly right, but it almost reminds me of mambas. Because mm, they got yes. that coffin shaped head. Yep. You know, these have a little bit different uh, oh, snout. Yeah. Yes. But kind of that coffin head mm -hmm. shape, you know, a really only thing. And mambas also, greens especially, are a border. Their eyes green. are very unique too. Yeah. It's almost like a slit that's going the wrong way. Mm hmm. And I wonder, and I don't know a whole lot on their eyesight, but I wonder if that has to do with just being able to see a knolls in, 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 they're in their camouflage. And if we look at their belly really quick, someone want to share, just turn your hand right here. So on their belly too, if you look, there's white lines. <laughs> it's going to wrap around the camera. They go through the belly on both sides. So it's solid green, except for those white lines right there, which I think is really kind of neat. It adds just a splash of, of contrast and color in that green. And then the, the belly green is actually a lighter green. So you have the darker green, a, like a lime green there on the belly. If I can get that to show without pissing this thing off. <laughs> and then uh, you got the white. Also prehensile tail. So you can see it's searching for purchase. It's holding on. They use that tail for a lot. Kind of like your carpet pythons. You want to be careful. Like I'm wearing a watch, so I had to kind of watch that. You don't want their tail to get pinched in there because they'll try to find a little crevice and stick that to hold on. And you don't want to hurt them. But. Speaking of, your, of their tail, that's how you sex them. You don't pop these guys. You can probe them. You yeah. can't pop them. The long tail like this, this is a female. The longer that tail is, uh, it is a female. Now really quick, put in the comments if you know where a tail on a snake starts. I do. Caleb does. And we are going to reveal it here in a second. But there is a, a, a spot where a tail on a snake actually begins. People think so they're the all the whole tail. snake isn't a tail? No, the whole snake is not a tail. We'll say that for our stupid snake stuff people say. The whole thing is just one big tail. No, no, it's actually not. Uh, we give you enough time to comment. That was just some cheesy crap to get you to write stuff to help us in the logarithm. But the snake's tail actually starts at his butthole, as we say in the trade of the cloaca. So cloaca and back would be the actual tail for that is, is body. And here you can actually see it because I don't have to look at the cloaca. You can see right about there. Visual I bet I'm touching its butthole. Yeah. Uh, but let's, let's see if we can kind of get a peek here. Where is your cloaca, little one? Male? Maybe right there. Yeah, there it is. And there's a green, the white line break. And you can see if I put my thumb there and pull back, that's where the cloaca is. And that's where the tail begins. So there is a body part of a tail, a body, a head, and all of that. They are more than just a tube. And actually, in some of your snakes, your, your pythons and your boas, I believe, you will actually have a hip bone mm -hmm. in there, uh, right there by the cloaca, where they think the legs in evolution used to be some of the thought processes. So, cool stuff. Yeah. Just thought I'd share a little fact. Anything else you want to share about these Asian vine snakes? Uh, just one other thing is, I mean, you're going to see a lot of, you're probably going to see, it probably picks up better on the camera. There's probably a few bumps and bruises on these guys. That is because... 99.99% of your Asian vine snakes are wild caught yep. and none of them come in as babies. They always come in as adults. And so that means they've taken a beating of surviving in the wild. Right. So, so you're going to see that stuff as normal. That's how these two came to us. But what we're going to show off on Patreon, actually, if you remember, is these two came in and then they had first had for about six months, we mm -hmm. think, right? Then we purchased mm -hmm. their collection more or less for the mm -hmm. shop and kept what we wanted and sold off what we didn't. Uh, I'm sorry, I just kind of reflects a big old snake moving and I went, squirrel! Uh, <laughs> but with that, they actually were gravid. So we actually have what we would consider to be captive, hatched, or their, their live birth. So captive, born. born babies. They weren't bred in captivity. These have not been bred in captivity very successfully. 
I'm sure it's happened, but it's not something anybody's done great times. success. Seven times. Seven documented times. I'm sure there's some Probably random more. backwoods guy who's bringing them every week. Yeah. No, uh, but so we do have some captive-born babies, which is still pretty rare. But they have a really long time that they're grabbing. It's like nine months, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, if you breed these and you knock your wife or girlfriend up, you'll have babies at the same time. So it's kind of a cool clock. Uh, don't try that. Kurt, did you breed some Asian vine snakes? No. But you did put a bun in the oven, right? Yeah. So everybody say congratulations. Kurt is going to have a baby boy, correct? Yeah. Okay, he's so excited. Be excited. Can you be excited? Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's all I really got. Unless you want to add anything, Kurt? No. Caleb, anything else you want to add? No. Let's go see those babies on Patreon.